I've always had an on and off relationship with survival games. It started with Minecraft in 2010, and I must have been around 12 or even 13 years old, and that was, from what I can remember, my first real experience into that genre of survival games. And I played that game for a good few years until it just stopped being fun. After that, Daisy and Rust became the two games I was focused on, but even after a short while, I realized that I'm just not really into those type of survival games all too much. It was just all kind of unnecessary to me. In near enough all these games, you had to deal with your typical zombie, your monster, your cannibal, the wild animals, and often they take place in the hot, dense jungle of somewhere or an unforgiven frozen wasteland of some sort. To me, that's just boring. They're all the same and they kind of just lack personality. The type of survival game I was looking for didn't necessarily have to have direct conflict, but I wanted something which tells a story, actually has normal and based characters, and is somewhat grounded. No, I'm not talking about The Last of Us, I'm referring to Disaster Report, which is a game I have already reviewed on this channel, and I suggest you go watch. A card should pop up right about now so that you have some context. Now, I only found out about Disaster Report when looking at a few PS2 hidden gem lists, as they're called, and I was amazed. Disaster Report was exactly the type of game I was looking for, and to my surprise, it was on the PS2, no less. And then, I found out it has a sequel, called Raw Danger. But before I get into that, there's something that I often think about when it comes to game design, playable environments, and characters. It's the whole idea of something being realistic. Usually when we play games, the situations we find ourselves in are often quite extreme. You know, it'll be something like a global war between multiple superpowers and the whole world is at the brink of disaster, or, you know, something silly like that. And the characters we play as are not really relatable in any way whatsoever. You have some th someone, rather, like Nathan Drake, for example. He's the kind of wise-cracking middle-aged man who has the upper body strength of a Greek god, for example, and can survive near enough everything. Overall, these are elements you just don't see on a day-to-day -day basis, and there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy games like that. But when it comes to survival games, I want something kind of common, something grounded, something I can relate to. And this is, like I said, even more prevalent, again, in survival games for myself, really. I want regular characters, not the Chris Redfields of today who can punch boulders out their way because nothing is really amazing about that. But when a regular person is put into an extraordinary situation, that is a good hook and something that can be more easily relatable. Since we're on the topic of characters, let's start with that and the story of Raw Danger, and we'll get to gameplay and then graphics afterwards. You begin the game with Joshua Harwell, or in this case, Friendly Broski, because you can actually rename all playable characters for a more personalized experience, but back on topic. Joshua is a college student who's trying to earn an extra bit of cash as a waiter for what's called the GeoCity Inaugural Banquet, which has been hosted by the city's mayor, Major Goldstein, which is a very important character in Raw Danger. But this is an event that's celebrating the newly developed underground city called GeoCity, which is found in the middle of an already pre-existing city called Del Rey City. A tad bit confusing, but stay with me. This newly developed underground city is meant to be a super safe, secure, and innovative place to live. So here you are, you're continuing your series of mundane tasks as a waiter, you're serving people and all the other jazz. And then you start to realize that something is wrong. You notice that water is starting to seep in from the outside. And soon after that, you learn that the Hudson River, a levee which controls and regulates the water levels has actually broken, fallen apart completely. And this is when things kick off because due to that, Delray City is in the direct firing line of getting swept away entirely. And then the game really begins. Now, unlike the first game, which only allows you to play as one character in which there is a single main story branch in the middle of the game, Raw Danger allows you to take control of six main characters that all have their own unique yet overlapping game scenarios. But what do I actually mean by this? Well, an action that you performed as one character 
will affect and carry on over to the other character you eventually take control of. It's a very interesting and somewhat unique system to actually find in a game like this, especially on the PS2. The game allows for you to make meaningful choices at multiple points throughout the story. Will you decide to help that character who's in danger? Will you pick up that one item which may end up saving your life? Or will you act as a complete ass throughout the entire game? Because I won't lie, guys, that's what I actually did. And damn, is it fun. Actually, you know what? Here are some quick highlights just to give you a taste. You're afraid of lightning? <laughs> Scaredy cat, come on! You're not a kid anymore. I can't hold on any longer! But coming back to the story, there are even tons of extra dialogue scenes throughout the game that don't really equate to anything, but just opportunities for an added moment of fun. Now, obviously, with a story being handled like this, you would expect multiple endings, right? Well, luckily, there are in the game. And what's great about this is that you, of course, have the main ending and then a few alternatives, and this applies to every character in the game. There is quite a lot of detail to be found in the story and how it all weaves together is actually just quite amazing to me because this game will for sure take multiple playthroughs for you to experience everything. It certainly was the way for me. I mean, it's just fact. There are even opportunities for you to end certain characters' stories quite, for lack of a better word, prematurely. And because of that, you may end up missing an extra hour or even two of story and gameplay for that specific character. The story found in Raw Danger is quite grounded in the way it works, although there is a silly subplot involving a virus that can wipe out the human race, but it's a subplot, and though quite silly, it's still entertaining in that campy disaster report slash Raw Danger way. The characters you play as and interact with, well, some are enjoyable, others I completely hated, and some are just plain weird. One example is Detective Trap, who, by the way, is a fucking psycho. He's like if good cop and bad cop removed the cop element, and then what's left is Detective Trap. Let me offer some context though. One of the playable characters is framed for her brother's death, and Detective Trap is the first guy on the scene. He concludes straight away that she must be the killer, even though he has little to zero evidence really to prove that. He openly admits multiple times when you encounter him that he will just love to bloody kill you. And he but, well, he's a lawman, so he even states that because he is a detective, he can't actually do that. He just has this uncontrollable hatred towards you, and it felt so damn weird when I was playing the game. It was quite jarring, to be fair. But, um, as well, he's like the Terminator, in the sense that he is stupidly hard to get rid of. But I'll let you uh, play the game to find out what actually happens to him. I'll be honest, his character made no sense at all in the terms of the story. I mean, the whole city is falling apart, and then you have this one detective who's just on your ass. It's it's unbelievable. He's literally the worst detective in the world. And don't even get me started on this guy right here. He's on the same level of fucked up as Detective Trap. But um, yeah, I'll let you guys play the game to discover that. But yeah, as I was saying, the way the story in Raw Danger plays out, the way you can interact and change the outcome of near enough every character is just fantastic. I completely loved it. Just don't go expecting the most heavy and heart-wrenching story because you won't find it here, but I can be pretty certain that you'll get a kick out of the story in Raw Danger. Let's move on to the good stuff and the real reason why I enjoy this series, the gameplay. So before the game actually begins, you get the chance to play through a really useful tutorial, and it's quite interesting to me in the sense that it actually takes place in the game, what I mean by this is that the first playable character actually goes to what's called the Del Rey Relief Center, a location which is actually in-game, in which you can go through multiple rooms and learn the basics of gameplay. 
Now, I find this quite interesting because in many tutorials I have played in games, they tend to not actually fit with what's actually going on. They feel quite disconnected in the sense that the tutorial doesn't actually take place in the game at all and it may be a simulation of some sort or something silly like that. I don't know, it's just, it's kind of a nice detail, even in a tutorial like this, that it takes place inside the game world. I know it's not a big detail, but still, it's a detail I like. After that, the game begins, and as mentioned before, you start as Joshua, a waiter for the new Delray Underground City. Now, it's all quite relaxing, and the game makes you go through a few menial tasks, such as bringing the mayor a glass of water. Now, the chef beforehand tells you this. Mayor Goldstein wants his water. Hurry up and take this to him. Don't run or you'll spill the water. Except when I was playing, I decided to be a dick in near enough all my playthroughs. And in this particular instance, I ran around in circles and messed around, which in turn causes the water to spill and for the mayor to get pissed off at you. What took you so long? And how did you manage to spill so much? You need to be more careful. Now, does this specific decision really equate to anything? No, not really, but Raw Danger is a game of decision-making and survival, and even before everything kicks off, this gives you a small hint that even doing things a certain different way or deviating from what you've been told can still have effects, and this carries out throughout the entire game. But in terms of proper gameplay, you progress through the game by navigating through numerous obstacles in the environment, fighting through the extreme weather, making use of items found in the game world, managing your inventory, and of course, via dialogue choices. The new warmth mechanic, though, plays a huge part in this game and it's integral that you keep an eye on it, even more so in the late game when you play a certain characters. You see, every character has BT, which simply stands for body temperature, and this can be affected if your character's clothes gets wet, if it's really cold, if it's snowing, and so many other factors. If your BT continues to drop, then you'll even lose the ability to sprint and you'll eventually slow down and collapse, causing a game over. Now, there are of course so many other ways to get a game over, such as drowning, having something fall on you, and a lot more actually. But how do you stay warm? Well, dodged throughout the entire game are heaters, which allow you to, shockingly enough, warm yourself up, make your clothes dry, and even cook some food if you so desire. They also double as save points and are essentially what replace the first game's water taps. Think of these heaters kind of like the bonfires from the Soul series. They are very important to keep an eye on when playing, so make sure to do so. There is another aspect to this game that I mentioned briefly before, and it's to do with your inventory, what you can really do with it, and what you actually want to be picking up. So there are tons of items to discover in this game, from numerous variations on clothing, which can help you keep warm and even look as cool or as silly as you want in this very morbid and sad situation. Items that allow you to open certain locked areas and other items which allow you to craft makeshift coats, for example, and you're able to craft much, much more in this game. You obviously have to keep an eye out, though, in regards to how much you're carrying, since you do have a weight meter now, but I find this to be a bit of a step down from Disaster Report, since in that, your backpack and the items in it are represented in a 3D cubed space, making it a tad bit more realistic and actually easier to manage, but in my opinion. Now, Raw Danger wouldn't be the super fun game it is if it was lacking the numerous set pieces that occur in-game. These action segments will find you running away and avoiding multiple different hazards such as falling buildings, rushing bodies of water, explosions, mudslides, and even people. There are also a few stealth sections that sometimes work and sometimes don't. When, um, when you play them, you can see that the rough edges were left in there for sure, but it's nothing game-breaking, they're just kind of light-hearted segments. There are also a few environmental puzzles that involve you making use of items around the environment to solve certain problems. These puzzles never really felt too satisfying, though, for me. I mean, they weren't even really that challenging, but there were certainly moments, though, in the game when you have to pick up an item or do something, but... It wasn't clear at all that you had to do that. And in those instances, you'll be looking around everywhere trying to figure out what to do. But these are moments that are quite rare and only happened from what I can remember maybe two or three times at max, but they were definitely annoying when they did happen. 
I mentioned before, but the story obviously plays an important part in the game, and there are a multitude of decisions you can make, which can take you down one path or the other, and what you do in the game obviously affects the ending you can get. There, like I said before, multiple endings, so you want to keep an eye on what you're actually doing in-game. But not everything is all fine and dandy though, because this game has a ton of slowdowns, unfortunately. I wouldn't even be able to count the amount of times the FPS dropped because of something happening in-game during a set piece. It's very noticeable when it happens, and depending on what you're like, this may affect you more than it'll affect others. But it's kind of understanding why this is. I'm not justifying it, but a lot is going on in this game. And coupling that with the many post-processing effects that are implemented in the game, well, I can see why it will slow down as often as it does. And not to forget, but this is a PS2 game. Although saying that, quite a few PS2 games actually ran at 60 FPS and had smooth frame rates anyway. So let's just say it's the fault of the game engine. I guess this is a better chance than any to segue into the visuals of Raw Danger. And as you can see, it's definitely rough around the edges. This isn't the most appealing looking game on the system, but what it lacks in, let's say, visual appeal, it doesn't skimp out on visual details, if that makes sense. You see, to me, everything looks real in this game in the way the environment looks, items, and so on. I can believe that this is a city falling apart because when it happens in game, it looks real and believable. Buildings will crack and fall apart in front of you. There's a good sense of scale when it's happening too. Now, it may just be me who believes this, but I feel like the game does well when it comes to the visuals as it all looks and feels realistic enough, even though it's not the prettiest game out there. Now, before I move on to my conclusion, I feel like it's worth mentioning that this game and the one that came before it, Disaster Report, looks a tad bit different if you're playing the Japanese version. You see, Agitech are one of the game's publishers, and when it came to doing the localization for this game in the West, they decided to give near enough every character blonde hair, even if they clearly and clearly look Asian, with one example being Mayor Goldstein. I mean, come on, look at him. He's definitely not a blonde looking white guy. Now, another character who also looks quite odd is Detective Trap. I mean, his voice doesn't quite match with his visuals since he's he obviously looks Asian. I mean, come on, it's, it's bloody obvious. But they made him black and sounds like he's voiced by some black dude as well. I mean, they could have at least gave him a different character model just so everything makes sense about his character in regards to the visuals, but... I don't know, it's just, it's very weird when you hear him talk and then you just look at him and, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't make much sense. I'm glad we caught you. But you're just another loser who'll spend a few years in prison and be free. Other things worth mentioning as well is that during the driving sections of this game, you drive on the left side of the road. Even though the game is meant to be set in America due to the localization making that so, but since it's originally a Japanese game anyways, you still drive on the left. Lastly, if you look at the American cover art for the game, you notice that the two characters on screen don't have blonde hair, which originally coincides with the Japanese release of the game and not the Western version when everyone has, has blonde hair. It's bloody ridiculous. So yeah, it's all kind of weird, but I thought it'd be worth making a point out of anyways. But here we are, nearing the end of this quite long review of Raw Danger on the PlayStation 2. I love this game. Sure, it has the odd downfall or two in some aspects of the visuals and gameplay, but if you love adventure slash survival games, then for sure check this game out, or better yet, play Disaster Report and then play the sequel, which is this game, which I just reviewed, so you can see for yourself how the sequel evolved from the first game. There's not many games like this one, and if you're a collector of PS2 games, then you really have no excuse. But this has been my review of Raw Danger on the PlayStation 2. Make sure to stick around for the end card, and I'll catch you guys next time. Here's to a happy 2017. Hey there! If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe for more. Don't forget to check the description where you can also follow me on Twitter and Twitch, or even power the creation of my videos through Patreon or PayPal. The choice is yours. Thanks for watching, and catch you guys next time.